In this lecture, I'm going to talk about immunity to bacterial infections. And as you may know that immunity to bacterial infections is achieved by antibody. But however, for intracellular uh, bacteria, the immunity is achieved through delayed type hypersensitivity and as can be seen here this is an example infection by mycobacterium tuberculosis bacteria which is intracellular bacteria so if someone gets infected by mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, bacilli this bacilli will be taken by the macrophages and the Macrophages will process uh, this bacilli and the processed peptides derived from mycobacterium tuberculosis bacilli will get uh, presented in association with major histocompatible class 2 to T helper number 1. So T helper number 1 get activated and produce interferon gamma this interferon gamma, a cytokine, it will recruit more macrophages to the area. And these macrophages actually the wall of the remaining of the bacilli. And these macrophages produce another cytokine known as tumor necrosis factor alpha, which leads to destruction of this bacilli and maybe destruction of some tissues uh, here and this may lead to uh, formation of cheesy like uh, caseous material uh, known as uh, caseation so this is an example of intracellular uh, uh, immunity to intracellular uh, bacteria uh, but however, uh, for a small uh, bacteria, I mean uh, bacteria with low size and, 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 and also low uh, uh, virulence, uh, this bacteria will be eliminated by uh, vagocytosis. And as can be seen here, this is a vagocytic cell. And uh, on the surface of the vagocytic cell, we find uh, receptors for uh, complement 3B and, and we find also uh, two receptors specific for IgG antibodies these are uh, known as FC uh, gamma R1 receptors specific for IgG1 and gamma R2 and FC gamma R2 receptors gamma R3 specific for IgG3 so when the antibody when the bacteria uh, captured by the antibody so these antibodies will bind to their specific receptors on the surface of the vagocytic cell and 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 this followed by uh, vagocytosis of the bacteria it is actually antibody uh, mediated vagocytosis but however uh, in some instances bacteria it is uh, surrounded or uh, so the complement component C3B will bind to the outer surface of the bacteria and, and then this will optimize the bacteria to the vagocytic cell through binding to the C3B receptor and this is known as, actually as uh, opsonization through the opsonin but however uh, this way of elimination or, or killing of bacteria is, is not true for larger bacteria with greater virulence so bacteria uh, uh, of a large uh, size with greater uh, virulence tend to induce an adaptive and specific immune uh, responses and i am going to talk about extracellular uh, bacteria and this extracellular bacteria actually uh, induces a production of humoral uh, antibodies and these antibodies are 
uh, rest against uh, products of this bacteria for example exotoxins like in diphtheria uh, like diphtheria toxins and endotoxins such such as libo uh, poly uh, saccharides but however i find it will be very interesting uh, to give an idea uh, uh, and to give short account on how do antibodies work in bacterial infection and as you know that as our as you may know that antibodies work in three ways neutralization optionalization and complement uh, activation this is neutralization means antibody or antibodies interfere with the binding of uh, this bacteria to the host uh, cell and optionalization this has been shown here in this uh, slide through the opsonin so this uh, bacteria together with the opsonin uh, they bind to the specific complement receptor on the surface of the vagocytic cell and this followed by it is its uh, vagocytosis and and, and complement actually uh, uh, some antibodies uh, in, in, in cooperate with the complement and this uh, mediates actually or mediates uh, aliases of, uh, of the bacteria and I will give uh, actually some example but however before that I will give uh, example for uh, neutralizing antibodies and optionizing antibodies and antibodies that uh, uh, cooperate with the complement system so neutralizing antibodies uh, these are uh, 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 rest against exotoxins and, and, and lead to uh, elimination uh, of the toxicity of this bacteria for example for example uh, corny bacteria diphtheriae and clostridium uh, tetanae so these are uh, neutralizing antibodies antibodies to exotoxins and and also i will give uh, another example here this is another example of of optionizing antibodies and these antibodies alone or in cooperation with complement can optionize biogenic uh, pathogens for example in case of streptococcus uh, pneumoniae uh, so these antibodies optionize uh, the, the, this biogenic uh, pathogen uh, uh, alone to the cell or, in co or it eliminated in cooperation with the complement system and, and uh, uh, the activation of the complement uh, system uh, result in elimination of uh, some bacteria for example Neisseria meningitis and Neisseria gonorrhea and, and this is uh, actually uh, the example of uh, uh, antibody that mediates activation of uh, complement system and as can be seen here these are antibodies raised against uh, some bacteria and they they actually bind to the specific uh, bacteria that they are raised against and binding of antibodies to the bacteria this will lead to formation of what is so called immune complex so formation of the immune complex uh, activates actually the classical pathway of the complement and the activation of the classical pathway of the complements is start by activating the complement component number one and as can be seen here this is c1q of the complement component number one get uh, bind or get bound to uh, immune complex and this finding of uh, c1q to the immune complex will activate complement component number four and complement component number two and this will lead to uh, cleavage of these uh, components into short fragments and big fragments so big fragment of complement component number four this is c4p uh, get uh, bound to short fragment complement component number two c2a and actually this acts as c3 Converters uh, acts on C3 and cleaves C3 actually into uh, short fragments C3A 
and big fragment C3B, then C3B will bind to this molecule, and this molecule will act as uh, C5 uh, convertase uh, lead to cleavage of C5 into C5A and C5B, so C5B will bind. So following that, no need to cleave more complement, complement component as the machinery, machinery now is on. So complement component number six will bind, then uh, complement component number seven, eight, nine, all of them they will bind. And this result information of membrane attack complex or MAG, this MAG removes phospholipid from the service of the, this uh, bacteria. And this actually, it will lead to disruption of the osmolarity. So, uh, plasma will enter the bacteria, and the bacteria get to swollen, and eventually this bacteria uh, rupture. And, and this way of killing, uh, actually, it takes place in gram-negative uh, organism. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about the role of natural killer cell in immunity to bacteria. And, and, and a natural killer cell actually, as we know that it has uh, an antiviral activity primarily. But however, in case of bacterial infection, so bacteria, they, they, they actually bind to the natural killer cells through the toll-like receptors. And these toll-like receptors are known as uh, pattern recognition receptors. So these pattern recognition receptors or toll-like receptors, they recognize pathogen-associated molecular patterns on the surface of bacteria. For example, gram-positive bacteria, uh, they uh, express uh, peptide glycan, and gram-negative bacteria, they express uh, lipopolysaccharides on their surface. So this toll-like receptor on the surface of natural killer cell will recognize this pattern as this pathogen associated molecular pattern. So bacteria will interact with the toll-like receptor uh, number two, and this will lead to activation of natural killer cell. So activated natural killer cell will produce perforin, which will induce perforation of the bacteria, and it will lead to its death, and also it will produce uh, cytokines, uh, namely interferon gamma and tumor necrosis factor alpha. They have pro inflammatory and uh, attract more macrophages with more uh, uh, cytokines and more protective, protective role. And, and, and now I'm going to talk uh, about the role of uh, uh, neutrophils. As can be seen, this here, they are uh, neutrophils, they are attracted or recruited to the area by the tumor necrosis uh, factor alpha uh, in the milieu or in the vicinity or in the uh, site of uh, infection. Actually, this tumor necrosis factor alpha recruit neutrophils and the recruited neutrophils get uh, activated and they produce cytokines, for example, uh, interleukin number six uh, and interleukin number 18 and interleukin number eight. Uh, these are chemoattracting. Uh, cytokine and also they produce activated neutrophil myeloperoxidase and reactive oxygen species and the activated neutrophils also they uh, modify their chromatin and produce some fibers or filaments these filaments are very sticky so they have the capacity to trap uh, bacteria as they are known as uh, neutrophil extra cellular trap and uh, this process of sending out filaments or fibers is known as uh, mitosis. Thank you very much, Professor Ahmed.